Alright. Let's get back to where we were last. My green screen. Wait. In the bear? Where's my green screen messing up over there? Two secs. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of tips you can that I can say, uh, but your your starship has cargo. Don't forget about it. About that. And um, hey from what people have been saying, one of the things you really want to do is get your main story done. And then you can have fun with all the side quests. Yes, exactly. It's like, like when someone insults you, a keeper of Willis, can we have a moment? Oh, Mateo, it's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh, well, what's on both your minds? Uh, they talk about unity. Oh, yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh, how we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well... Does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really weird. Where are they? In there. Oh, now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? It started with this, it started with discovery this anomaly. We've lost people, Keeper. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And these Starborn, I take it they're different from the people of the settled systems? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So, you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. Um, that's a stretch, but we hope you can help us. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path of discovering his meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but maybe it's more. See the story then? In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun. And he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least 
his grave. Wait a minute. Yes, something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. All right. The Enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis, helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. The rune worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the keeper. We need to catch um, up. I'm going to be two seconds, chat. Let me just need help with something. Alright, let's go see this uh, snake worshipper. Let's go, Sarah. We need to go to the jail? Oh, I know where we need to go. They go over here. It's a shame House Varun abandoned their embassy. To become part of the most advanced technology corporation in the world system. What is this? Oh, I suppose we can steal from the bank. I feel. Wow. You Alright, I'm pretty sure we have actually seen this lady before. The fact of uh, we went in here in the past. Visitor, I have all the company I need. Um, I know you've talked to the keeper of prisons about the Varun faith. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. Perhaps you should hear us out before you decide to cast judgment. Yeah, the well, great we... serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. A cosmic serpent seems a poor answer for the universe's problems. Now wait a moment. No matter how strange things might seem to you, there's no reason to insult this person's beliefs. It is not an answer, for there is no question. The Great Serpent will come. All concerns are meaningless in the face of the oblivion he will assuredly bring. You wish to speak of the Keeper's Pilgrim, do you not? I will tell you of him, and then you will leave. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent he does not hesitate. He cuts the unbeliever down. But the unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the great serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan. The unbeliever says, remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I... 
strength and conviction show your worthiness to the Great Serpent. The kill is not as important as showing there is no doubt. I grow tired of speaking. Leave me. Uh, There's something I need to talk to you about. Okay. Two texts again. She needs some more help. What do you want, Sarah? Look, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. The fact that you risked your life to save me, I... I don't know what to say. You would have done the same for me. Well, yes, of course. But that's beside the point. My only wish is that my rescue hadn't come at the expense of Barrett's life. He was one of my closest colleagues and a cherished friend. <laughs> oh, he always knew how to make me laugh. <laughs> I'll miss him dearly. It was completely out of... I really wish I could believe that. Our charter at Constellation has always been to analyze the unknown, but rarely at the expense of our members' lives. Yet all the while, I've been cavalier about taking risks and pushing the boundaries, not appreciating the true cost of my actions. Had I not pushed so hard to pursue the Starborn, perhaps... None of this would have happened at all, and Barrett would still be alive. Maybe you've seen another playthrough. Can't take responsibility for the Starborn's aggression. Of course I can. You can't. Damn it! Why is this happening to us? We're explorers. Our curiosity pushes us to seek answers to life's mysteries. It's one of the core traits of humankind. Yet in return, this is what the universe throws at us. Beings from God knows where who are trying to murder us. Why? What have we done wrong? Uh, simply bad luck, Sarah. No. I refuse to allow Barrett's death to be attributed to bad luck. It isn't fair. The question is, where do we go from here? Do we stop exploring? Stop pushing the boundaries? Take a more aggressive posture towards the universe? I don't know where to begin. We keep doing what we're doing because we did anything wrong in the first place. We continue to move forward and there's extreme caution on the way. We continue to move. We continue moving forward and take out any Stands in our way. Oh, I want the bottom one, but the top one's the worst. I suppose you're right. I just hope we don't make the same fatal mistake twice. Well, I suppose that's all I had on my mind for now. Oh, it was a relief to get all of that out in the open. Yeah. I'm sorry I got so angry. But I assure you, it's nothing personal. You're the only one I feel comfortable talking with about these things. Oh. Good, because I expect this won't be the last time I intend to cry on your shoulder or scream in your face. Well, we have a long road ahead of us. I suppose it's high time we get back to work. You're giving off traits like you're slightly, uh, I don't know, Sarah. Angry, sad, angry, sad, sad, angry. Maybe a bit of an angry sad. Contrary to what you might have heard, you see security personnel are good people. And Sergeant Yumi just happens to be no friend. Well, I... If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. 
Oh, we're not. Sorry. Can I help you? Uh, just like ah. We don't mean to be intrusive. Any information you could provide would be very useful. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a Unity pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. I had a term. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no, the Drifter asked them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. Maybe there's a hidden message in what he's saying. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. All right, thank you. Always happy to help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. Excuse me. Literally, we get nowhere from that. Hello. Hmm. 